Hey guys, it is Friday, May 2nd, and for those of you keeping track at home, it is the 16th year anniversary of the Battle of Hogwarts. So, there is a... Twitter kind of exploded, um, because JK Rowling tweeted, It's the 16th anniversary of the Battle of Hogwarts. I'm having a moment's silence over my keyboard. I hated killing some of those people. And... She, someone made a comment was, let's bring, let's bring one back to life, it'll be awesome. And she said, yeah, but who? And so I caught to think, and I'm like, okay, seriously, if I could go and bring back someone that she killed in the battle at Hogwarts, so the one in the second book, so the second war, not the first war. And I can't think of anyone. And I started quite literally going through them. I'm like, well, Hedwig. And Hedwig kind of, okay, oh yeah, uh, by the way, spoiler alert. Hedwig kind of had to die. And the problem is, J.K. Rowling was so informative of why she selected certain people, or creatures as it may be. So, like, Hedwig represented the lost of, Cherry, of, of Harry's innocence. So, that to me made total sense. I didn't like it, but it made sense. So that one's fine. Mad-Eye Moody, you needed someone who was strong and resilient and you never thought was going to die. So he had to go. That also made sense to me. And now I can't remember who else is next. So let's go list of deaths in Deathly Hallows. Okay. All right. Let's go seven. All right. <coughs> These are all old. I'm trying to find... Okay, Hedwig, Moody. And then Rufus Scrimger. He was like, well, yeah, he, I didn't really care about him, honestly. And in order for Voldemort to be getting anywhere with the story, you needed to have him take over the ministry. So that made total sense. Uh, Grigorovich, again kind of necessary, so not a big deal there. Mathilda Bagshot, she had been dead a while ago, and again, kind of necessary for the storyline, so I don't really care about that. Grindelwald, I don't care, he was evil. Ted Tonks, okay, yes, but you kind of had to get the same feeling, because J.K. Rowling was setting up Teddy Lupin, to be essentially what Harry was, an orphan with no family. And so you kind of had to get rid of all of it. Um, you kind of had to get rid of anything that would have made him whole, except for Harry, and then he's got one grandmother, so that was kind of nice. But he was muggle-born, it was kind of inevitable, and you needed someone that you felt somewhat close to, excuse me, somewhat close to, but not too close, because if she had gone and killed off, like, one of the main three, it, it, just, it, could, it couldn't have worked, I don't think, as well. You needed to have that kind of solidarity of, together they make one perfectly rounded person, but because they're three people, they need to work together, and I think if any of the other two had died, because we kind of all went into it, I don't know, I kind of went into it figuring Harry was going to survive all seven books, and if you killed off one of the other two, I think the grief would have been so astounding, the ending would have been completely different. So I think by killing off secondary characters, or even tertiary, or whatever the fourth one is, <laughs> uh, quadrary characters, you kind of maintain the element of, wow, anyone can go, but you still kind of retain that element of, but the three, the, the main three keep powering on. So that's kind of how I view Ted and Dirks. Gornakia, goblins need to die, they need to because at that point I think the goblins were kind of not picking a side and I think the death of one of their own at the hand of people who support Voldemort kind of pushed them more on Harry's side a little bit. Uh, Peter Pettigrew had to maintain the prophecy that, Vol that Dumbledore put forward in book three. Dobby, oh my god, Dobby is where I finally broke down and sobbed when I was reading the book the first time and so I read the, I don't know if I've explained this before, I read the last two books with my friend and what we did was we read a chapter, talked about it, read a chapter, talked about it. So for six, that was great because we're like, 
I'm convinced by the end of six that Snape is evil. He killed Dumbledore. And then we get to seven and I'm like, oh crap. But my friend like changed her email to Snape is innocent kind of thing. Like she was convinced that Snape was a good guy and she was totally right. And that's awesome. But oh my God, I was so angry. So, so angry when Toppy died. I was so sad and angry and I just went, what? But I will say, this is one of the few times I, this is, yeah, one of a handful of times that I will say this. I liked how he died in the movie better than how he died in the book. I don't know why, but the image of him dying, it was so... The image of him dying in the book was just, it didn't feel, it didn't sit right with me. And I'm like, no, he, he deserves more than this. He, he deserves like a proper epic death because he is so freaking awesome. And the movie kind of gave him that. So I was really, really excited about that. I liked his death. Like I said, I liked his death better in the movies than I did in the book. And again, there's like a handful of scenes from the movies where I'm like, they did it better in the movie than they did in the book. And it might just be a visual thing, but yeah, that's one of them. Uh, the random goblin don't care um, don't care about those don't care about that okay the fact that crab died um, and it was his own doing was I liked that I really liked that death did I want crab to die well no but I liked the fact that it showed that if you no matter which side it was kind of like no matter which side you're on if you don't have an understanding of what you're doing, you you can go just as quickly as the people you're trying to kill. Like kill. So that was like, oh my God, Fred Weasley, duh, that one. Okay, not a fan of that one. Not gonna lie. But again, completely necessary. You needed to have that solid, epic, awesome family that is the Weasleys. This family that Harry goes into and knows and just five minutes in their presence and he gets what a family is even though he's grown up with nothing similar and he just gets how these people they drive each other insane and Molly's constantly going crazy about all of them but they love each other and they always have each other's backs and even Percy like the second he walks in there and he's all he has to do is apologize and the whole family just takes him back and that's just that's what family is right and Harry's only ever experienced that with the Weasleys but you needed to have that broken. You needed to have a death in the perfect family, but still show them, um, still show their camaraderie and still show their love and support. And yes, we're grieving, but we're still gonna, like, yes, her, Ginny is grieving. She's just lost one of her big brothers, but she's still gonna grab onto Hermione because that's her best friend. That's her family that she's made for herself. And Ron's still gonna grip onto Harry and they're all still gonna, be together and they're all still gonna go on and fight even though they've suffered this great loss because that's what family does and so that death I hated it but I, I loved it at the same time uh, Lupin and Tonks those are the ones probably in terms of like actual characters that I loved from the books I adore Tonks she is my favorite adult character Luna's my favorite uh, Hermione's my favorite student but Tonks is my favorite adult character and Luna's just hysterical but Again, J.K. Rowling has said that she set it up so that there would be another orphan. You know, what is, what does war do? It leaves, it leaves parentless children. It leaves childless parents sometimes. But, and she needed to kind of show that this war again had robbed a child of its parents. But he's going to be better off than Harry is because he's going to put these people in his life that will ensure that he's okay. Um, Lavender Brown, I was not convinced that she was actually dead. Um, it was, yeah, I was not convinced that she was actually dead because all they said was they saw her lying down and a werewolf starting to bite her. And in my mind, I pictured he's not going to bite her if she's already dead. He's going to bite her if she's alive so that she turns and then he's got another kind of werewolf to have under his control for your back. So I don't know. I, I still kind of disagree with that. I don't think she's dead, but. I'm usually wrong and constantly insane, so whatever. Uh, Colin Creevy was very, very sad, but again, it was, you know, he, th it's like, oh yeah, you're like, you're reading this book and you're like, damn it, McGonagall, let the underage kids fight. Well, 
this is what happens. And this is why the Weezies were so adamant that Ginny should not fight. And even Harry was like, look, I know you're an amazing witch, but get your ass back in the room of requirement because you should not be fighting. You are way too young. Um, Snape, obviously, kind of had to go. Nagini, who cares? Uh, Bellatrix, that was the most freaking badass fight ever. Um, and yeah, Voldemort just, it was either going to be one of them, but you kind of had to, you have to end one of these kind of books, especially because it's deemed a children's book. You have to end it with the hero triumphing over the antagonist. You, you have to. And even if it looks like the hero is down, no matter how many times it looks like the hero is down and he's, he's going to be defeated, you need to have that because, well, no, and not just children, adults too, but children especially need to learn that even if it takes seven years, good will win. Even if it takes 50 years, good will win. And that's a very, I think, important message to have. So TLDR, no, I would not change any of the deaths in Harry Potter. Um, I didn't like some of them. I understood why some of them were necessary. Um, doesn't mean I liked them, but I don't think I would change a thing about those books, about who she killed in the last book, especially at the Battle of Hogwarts. Um, granted, not all of those were from the battle, but the ones that were especially, and I'm like, I, I deem them all, unfortunately, necessary to telling the story that needed to be told. So I have none nothing against this so anyway that is my video for today um i decided i should stop giving you guys warcraft videos and actually put some thought into some videos so this is what you're going to say holy crap i've yammered on for 12 minutes that's amazing anywho um i don't know what's going on tomorrow we are going to our trail appliances uh meeting to pick out all of our appliances for the new house so that is very exciting um and yeah that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you feel so inclined. Have a beautiful day.